A significant part of medieval literature contains astrological texts, especially astronomical tractates up until Kepler's age and even after that. The existence of several competing astrological schools led to the use of lavish symbolism by medieval astrologers, which makes it hard to speak of unified astrological definitions. Furthermore, each school developed its own linguistic and symbolic system. However, we shall soon see that many countries have surprisingly enough used a more or less uniform astrological symbolic system for zodiacal constellations. For example, this can mean that astrology was born relatively recently, in the epoch when the means of communication between the astronomers of different countries had already been developed well enough to provide for regular information exchange in a similar astrological language, in Europe and in Egypt, for instance. It would be expedient to remind the reader that the modern names for planets have been introduced by astrologers. The names for days of the week in such languages as English, French and German are also in direct relation to astrological concepts. Certain allegedly ancient horoscopes contain sufficient information to verify the date of the event they were supposed to glorify. Apparently, medieval and ancient chronicles refer to several spectacular solar eclipses accompanying the important events. The heavens validated thus the claim of the party that won the day and time stamped it with an eclipse. The scholars furnished an exact date for such vanity eclipse. Actually, to make valid reverse calculations of solar eclipses giving precise time, place, phase and duration one needs an atomic clock, a laser, a satellite, a computer and a special software. Once properly recalculated with the aid of modern computers and software, all the ancient eclipses turn out to be medieval, or fake. This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fictional Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time. Radiocarbon of Egyptian artifacts shows serious contradictions. We shall once again consider the alleged reliability of the radiocarbon method used for supporting the traditional version of the ancient history, particularly Egyptian, as reflected in a fundamental and detailed article published by the Manchester Museum in England in 1979 as part of the project named The Mummies of the Manchester Museum. The radiocarbon dating of the mummy from the Manchester Museum collection attributed the mummy's bones to 1000 BC. Whereas the cloth that the mummy has been wrapped in received the dating of 380 AD. The discrepancy between the datings of the mummy and the cloth equals some 1400 years, although the dates should be equal. The cloth may be somewhat older than the mummy if an old cloth had been used by the embalmers. But it couldn't possibly have belonged to a later age. This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fictional Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time. He follows in the footsteps of Sir Isaac Newton and finds clear evidence of the falsification of history. Armed with logic, astronomy and computers, Anatoly Fomenko proves that the history of humankind is dramatically different and drastically shorter than is generally presumed. History, fiction or science is now available in bookshops and on Amazon.com.